and call on the next speaker on the list, which is the Russian Federation. Uh, Chair, colleagues, first and foremost, I would like to address a word of gratitude to the outgoing chair of the committee of uh, information, Mr. Kicker, representative of Austria. Thank him also for his efforts on here to lead the committee and also congratulate the new chair and wish him every success in the further work. I would also like to thank uh, the Secretary General on, for his report on the work of the Department for Global Communications and overall we support the efforts of this department, this new rebranded department and also those efforts that are being undertaken in strategic communication based on services and information and outreach activities. We also believe that at the basis of such activities should be the understanding of a universal, impartial and unique role played by the United Nations in modern international relations. Certainly the authority of our organisation in addressing the problems faced by humanity. Russia closely cooperates with the organisation and directly with the Committee on Information also and the, the Department for Clo Global Communications and I'll give you a few examples of our day-to-day -day routine cooperation with the UN. In September last year in Moscow we held and successfully so the international seminar on the problem of peace in the Middle East. And at the opening of this, there was a uh, Under Secretary General for Global Communications, Ms. Smile, took part in this. I'd like to also highlight the contribution made by the UN Information Centre in this uh, in Moscow, which is a very important partner in this whole series of project project projects that draw uh, attention of Russia to the UN's work and its goals and challenges. I'd like to say that um, some of these seminars were really had a real um, clear and successful multilateral approach. This time, and we're very grateful for the department for this, and thank you to all the participants, there was real substantive and comprehensive, relevant issues discussed and we all try to find responses together to these issues. We're also working very closely with the Russian news service of the UN. Particularly last year we had a joint initiative which was had very good feedback in social media. We had a whole series of material broadcast dedicated to R Alexander Pushkin, the famous Russian poet, and we celebrated the uh, Russian Language Day too. We hope that our productive cooperation will only grow in this area in particular. Overall, we note the efforts of the Russian News Service to highlight the quality and the diversity of content and also to try and have an objective and not only global but also regional agenda. We also welcome the detailed focus on the report um, as the exhibition of photographs of the blockade of Leningrad, siege of Leningrad on the 75th anniversary of the lifting of the blockade which was held at the UN. It is now the 70th anniversary of the work of cooperation between the UN and the Soviet Union and there was a large number of events dedicated to this including at the UN Information Centre in Moscow with the participation of the Russian Association of UN Assistants, particularly we had a jubilee stamp, which was um, franked by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, during the official ceremony. This was in June 27, 2018, and we had the participation of the led head of the Federal Communications Agency in Russia. In September, Sergei Lavrov, the Foreign Affairs Minister of the Russia, visited the UN headquarters and visited the UN library and um, gave a book from Yevgeny Primakova and presented that to the Dag Hammarskjöld Library. The UNIC in Moscow collects documents also from international organisations, from Russian State Library, 
and organised a photo exhibition of 70 years of the UN in Russia. The many events to celebrate this were organised, not only in Moscow, but also in many Russian regions, including Kazan, St. Petersburg, Krasnoyarsk, Yakutsk, Sochi, and in other cities too. In September 2018, the Under Secretary General, Ms. Alison Smile, visited Yekaterinburg uh, to the uh, local university to open a United Nations Hall, lecture hall at the university. I'd also like to note the efforts of the UNIC in Moscow on a whole series of fronts, from strategic approach to implementing specific activities. One of the most significant projects of these was to celebrate the 45th anniversary of Russia's participation in peacekeeping operations of the United Nations. We organised celebratory activities for this and with participants on an unprecedented scale. This included Russian veterans, uh, peacekeepers, including people from the first group of Russian peacekeepers ever deployed. The Russian in UNIC for last, almost 40 years has been supporting activities in this sphere and has been holding thematic meetings to support to preserve the laudable history of cooperation between the UN and the Russian Federation. This is just a few examples of our cooperation in the information sphere between Russia and the United Nations. Now I'd like to move on to the next very important global overall section of my statement, and that is the assessment of reforms and activities of the department. We continue to follow very, these reforms very closely. And it is indisputable that the United Nations should develop in line with the most recent trends in the ICT sphere and providing audiences with new formats for, get, for receiving news, including in line with the uh, demands of the younger generations also. We also highlight the diversity and quality of these news resources and the effective awareness raising campaigns and also new and original practices to promote uh, the priorities of the United Nations. At the same time, the editorial policy of UN resources in the UN should not only focus on the growth in number of sub subscribers and the number of, this is of, of course very important, but the priority is making the public aware of the UN agenda in line with the principles of impartiality and reliability of the facts. Our goal is not only reform and de to develop new media, but also to preserve the 10 years of experience that the UN has accrued in information sphere. We'd also like to say that new innovations of the department should be done with the mandatory mandatory taking into account of the views of member states. The informal briefing um, held by the USG, Ms. Smale, on issues of reform, which allow us to, will our delegates to express their views and draw attention of the Secretariat to problems. These are something very welcome. And with these upcoming phases of reform before us, we would call for these briefings to be held more regularly and not limited just to preparing for the regular sessions of the Committee on Information. Moreover, we'd like to receive information on the spending and how much it costs to reform the department. Budget cuts are means that we have to get lose a lot of services, and therefore the budgetary issues are more pressing. Particularly the problems are the issues with publishing metadata on the webcast on all of, in all official languages. This problem remains despite many calls in resolutions on this resolution um, as adopted by the UN General Assembly in September last year. We'd also like to avoid fake news when we're working with the UN. Uh, we all would dispute the use of that. And we think that these vital, vital cornerstones of the UN, such as multilingualism, sh which should light the foundation of all UN activity, are often violated because of a lack of funding, simply. At the same time, interest for interest but not vital innovation remains. We have the impression that against the context of the strengthening position of English, multilingualism is starting to be seen to be an anachronism, where allegedly we can just you get rid of multiling 
multilingualism um, if we are looking at communication of the future. We'd like to receive information about the UN's activities and it should be available to the maximum number of people, whatever region they live in, whatever age they are, or whatever profession they hold. We believe that productive cooperation between the Department for Global Communication with the UN Coordinator on Multilingualism is of vital importance to ensure equal use of all official UN languages in all types of uh, communication and outreach activities for the organisation. Finding the best methods to fulfil this um, to fulfil the Secretariat's tasks is key. These new um, daring in bind regional specificities should be a priority in the work of the UN News Services, though this policy is not always, uh, doesn't always garner positive results. We've noticed that the uh, materials on projects and events, for example, that hold, held by the Russian mission, uh, with Russian language, uh, Russian speaking, um, people is only published with the Russian language media services and so that means this content is not reflected in the other areas and this trend is also continues in other news services too. We are convinced that we can't allow a fragmentation of the media of the UN of the UN pool when each editorial office is only focused on the issues in their particular region. Certainly it's not possible and it's not necessary to have a translation of all, or to tr transmit all material, though news services should pay attention to the events of, to, a, to the general public rather than the targeted public. Then we can have a truly global scale um, undertaken by the Global Communications Department. Chair, to overcome the disputes in international relations, the information space is starting to become an area, are, arena for f battle uh, and battle for influence between different players and indeed an information war. As before, as we see worsening conflict in the both political and information sphere, we can see a phenomenon of uh, disinformation and a news uh, that is spreading to different spheres. Um, including the very famous fake news. And this is a threat in itself, and it's often also used by some countries or groups of countries um, as a pretext for fight against the just opposition points of view, strengthening control over their information space. Unfortunately, our call to work together on the principles and methods to counter disinformation, bearing in mind the position of all stakeholders, and the platform, um, indeed, for such a dialogue could be the United Nations. However, we haven't had necessary support for this. But we very much hope that the experience of the United Nations organisation and its role and authority, uh, its toolkit that it has available to, will be used to tackle this issue. Here we see this on a, with a state and a regional level. and a multi -le We can see a lead legislative reforms on way which legalise new limitations in the media sphere. And on an international level, there are attempts to use dubious initiatives to de facto in, have dis run counter to principles of international law on the international agenda, such as freedom of expression and equal access to information. And also, um, these uh, international projects, which over the last uh, six months, we've seen many of them over the last six months, these could lead to a legalisation of censorship and discreditation of media. And this will undermine ind independent journalism, which itself is a key guarantee of free and democratic societies. We have borne witness um, to a time of cooperation between with the media. And then before that, this process, the UN was, in my view, one of the best platforms. But we've seen here within this house in Manhattan where there's been agreements uh, between journalists and journalist organisations, holding companies, bringing together different media. We don't want, what we don't want to see is to this, this era to be left in the past but at the same time we now we are seeing a strength uh, heightening confrontational trends where cooperation between different media resources are being 
sub are being subject to antagonism and competition and the um, the worsening conflicts within the journalist community and here we are coming to a very dangerous situation where large-scale confrontation um, is reminiscent of the Cold War where a the idea of an external enemy means that people are not ready to enter into dialogue. That's what global history has shown. The consequences of such international processes can be tragic, as we have seen. Chair, this week, um, on the, third, uh, we will, the international community will be uh, celebrating, and it will bring us all together, the day, the day of the free press will be celebrated soon. And we call on countries to cooperate and undertake the necessary efforts to uh, draw up processes to protect to freedom of expression during journalists and protect ourselves from fake news and disinformation. We also hope, very much hope that the whole department will get involved with this. And also, moving slightly away from the ag main agenda of the work of the committee, I would like to say the following. Today, in one o'clock in the ECOSOC chamber, Russia the Russian Federation will be holding a panel discussion which, where we invite all delegates to take part. It will be informal, but it will be on an expert level, and we are ready to discuss about all of the topics that have been raised on the, um, for this celebration, which will be held on the 3rd of May. The Committee on Information um, is usually held at the start of May, when we, the rest of the world is celebrating the end of the Second World War. And this is important event for the whole international community and they should be duly reflected in the UN celebrations and the resources allocated there too. Every year we have a uh, particular attention to this um, memorial services and we have historic, historic, historical activities but also we bring together veterans from around the world. For example, last year um, there was a very successful concert to songs, um, victory songs, from, but not those that express uh, not those that reflect aggression, aggression, but those that call for the protection of freedoms. So I'd like to invite you to the General Assembly Hall, for a which will be hold, held organisation by the permanent mission of the Russian Federation, and with the assistance, and we'd be very, uh, very grateful to the ex Secretariat for their assistance um, in organising this. This year, the fourth. Uh, May On the 4th of May, a uh, musical ensemble will hold a concert in the UN and we will also show a film, an important project of in, with these songs of victory. There will be a meeting with artists and veterans and also a photo exhibition of various uh, CIS countries. And the topic will be women heroes during the Second World War. It will be opened on the 6th of May and we invite all delegates to take part in this important activity to respect the memory of those, vet of those who died and also reflect our res respect for the veterans. Dear colleagues, we hope our colleague cooperation with the United Nations on the information front will continue in such a constructive way as it has so far to allow for bilateral and multilateral projects to increase in number. In the future, we believe it will be important to broaden this and to have joint initiatives with the participation of other states to count to address common challenges and threats in the media sphere. The new name of the department should reflect the global nature not only of the um, information and communication processes of the UN, but also the cooperation between the member states that it undertakes on this front. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I thank the distinguished representative of Russia.